I think the whole thing is is a, you know really sad and was completely avoidable. But too much has been said and done now. It happens in every family. Well, it happens in lots of families, but not on this sort of public scale. As I understand it with Netflix, you know, they still have a, a, a deal there who are going to want their pound of flesh. People within the palaces, you know, were helping mm. and really wanted, wanted it to work. The idea that people never wanted it to work, I just it, find completely bizarre. Hello, I'm Matt Wilkinson, Royal Editor of The Sun, and welcome to our show, Royal Exclusive. This week's guest has been reporting on the Royal News on television screens to millions for the past 16 years. He is Channel 5's Royal Correspondent, Simon Viger. Simon, thanks for coming on. Pleasure, Matt. As I say, 16 years. Um, I sometimes think within the Royal beat, it's like dog years. <laughs> <laughs> and, like, and so one year should be like seven or eight years, so yeah. it's really like five or six decades that uh, you know it probably feels like. Yeah. Uh, reporting on the news. Um, we have to start, unfortunately, uh, we, but we have to start with Prince Harry. Yes. So this week, um, it, it, companies, he's had to update his, his company's house uh, situation where he has had to say that he lives in the United States and not the United Kingdom. Is this just a procedural matter? Is it just a, uh, you know, is there something, is it paperwork or is it more significant? Is it more symbolic about where his life uh, uh, well, I think it's both. Um, congratulations on the on the story, by the way, because it was it was yours. But yeah, I mean, it states the obvious that he hasn't lived in the UK for uh, more than four years now. And last year, uh, Frogmore Cottage, well, they haven't lived for ages, but they officially moved out of Frogmore Cottage uh, last summer, which, as I understand it, is the date that he put on the company's house uh, documents. But it does have that sort of air of finality to it, doesn't it? That uh, okay, he's been living. Uh, in, the, in the US uh, since, well, just before the pandemic. But this confirms that, um, I, you know, he's still got British citizenship, but uh, his, his residency is, is in, in California, obviously. What I find interesting of this story is that we, I asked the palace and I said, you know, does he not have anything? Does he not even have like a pigeonhole uh, in a palace? <laughs> he doesn't have an office. He doesn't have no. a, you know, a letterbox or a postbox or anything, any, anything like that. Could, I'm surprised that there isn't somewhere in the UK, you know, St James's Palace or Buckingham Palace, where he could have a little kind of office or a secretary or, or someone, because he's still a member of the royal family, he's still yeah. the king's son. Um, it's rather sad that there's no, nowhere for him. Yeah, I mean, it is, it is sad, I agree, and completely unavoidable unav and unnecessary in, in my view. It, could have, it should have been sorted out. Clearly, there are plenty of places for him to stay in various castles and palaces if he ever uh, comes back. But, um, yeah, he's fifth in line to the throne. Uh, he is officially HRH, although they're, they're agreeing not to use it. He is a councillor of state, which is this uh, back room role that we've been speaking about in recent years, should somebody need to step in and sign documents or, or deputise. Um, so it's weird that, yeah, as you say, he doesn't at least have a, um, a pigeonhole or, or a desk at St James's Palace for, for correspondence. But I think that reflects the estrangement, you know, very uh, big estrangement with William. Um, doesn't seem to be any repair to that relationship, sadly. Uh, and with, with the King, obviously he saw him very briefly, very, very briefly in February. Um, and, um, and not since then, but, you know, hopefully they are in touch by phone. You mentioned about the councillors of state issue, which is, is, is technical, but yeah. it's really interesting, you know, for our constitution, for the way that the country, you know, is run. They've increased the number, I think last year or the year before, the king increased the number mm. of, of members of the family that can step in. Um, but if he was to, uh, Harry's spoken about possibly getting US citizenship, and there's talk about, you know, the, the, um, the courts in the United States are looking at his visa, uh, for instance, that's been handed to court. What, what are the implications of, of Harry constantly living in the United States. Um, I mean, you, you say it's a finality, but it's also constitutional issues, isn't it? He, he can no longer really step in for members of the royal family or do any help. No, he can't do that. And we, we actually, we saw it uh, very graphically for the, the late Queen's last state opening of parliament when uh, Charles and William were there and the crown was, was on the cushion, remember that. So mm. in that capacity, they were councillors of state there. That was a good demonstration of, of what it means to deputise. But there's other stuff behind the scenes, like meeting new ambassadors, signing acts of parliament. I mean, really important paperwork that if, if the king is out of the country or incapacitated, somebody uh, representing the head of state needs to do that. 
So uh, Harry is is still on that list. I think Andrew is is yeah. is on the list as well. Um, but the chances of that happening are slim. I think we can we can agree. Um, so yeah, as you say, the king has added more councillors to to the list. I mean, there are clearly enough people to do that. Mm. But yeah, it's a shame. I mean, it's I I think the whole thing is is a sh you know really sad and was completely avoidable. But too much has been said and done now. It happens in every family. Well, it happens in lots of families, but not on this sort of public scale. Um, and I think with William and Harry in particular, too much has been said for it ever to go back to the way it was, sadly. Yeah, I think at some stage it will have to be resolved. I mean, yeah. that's, that's for another day to talk about maybe, but at some stage, William and Harry will have to, because yeah. he's going to be king. Do you know what I mean? At some stage, he's going to have to sort stuff out with his brother, whether it comes an apology from Harry or, you know, or something. At some stage, they will have to sort it. But, yeah, well, they both want an apology, don't they? Yeah, and exactly. neither's going to back yeah. down on that, I think. Exactly. And also, don't want to constantly dwell on life in California, but how excited are you about <laughs> um, the Duchess of Sussex's jam? jam? Well... Uh, I can contain my excitement on that one. I mean, good, good luck to good luck to her. Um, I'm not sure this was in the big plan making jam, but uh, I'm unclear as to whether they're selling it or whether it's uh, they're giving it away or or, or what it is. But uh, uh, yeah, I'm I'm not uh, terribly interested in jam, and I don't I, I don't think most people. I think most people in the UK and perhaps quite a few in America have had enough now, and and they're not that interested in you know good luck to them hope hope you know hope it's uh, the projects work but uh, um, I didn't see her as a big uh, uh, jam mm. uh, tycoon well it's not it's not <laughs> It's not the progressive role that we were led to believe that, that, that they wanted. Because yeah. you remember, you know, when we were reporting at the time uh, when Meghan arrived, yeah. we were told that she was up at 5 a.m. in the morning, emailing staff. She had all these ideas. Um, she was really busy, you know, so many um, things that she wanted to do and, and interested in. And all we have really got from her when she has been set free is, you know, a couple of Netflix shows that or, or Pearl that what didn't actually go on Netflix that got cancelled, and and Jam. I mean, is is when she left, is this the kind of um, ambition you think that she had that she would end up s sending fifty jams of jars uh, jars of jam to influencers to post on, on on social media? No, I don't think I don't think it is. Um, uh, I I think the the media career or re relighting the uh, the screen career. As an actress, I mean, I think that's that's a long shot because you can never see her as a character. Now you you're going to see right. Meghan the Duchess, so that's difficult. So you almost um, typecast. Well, as yeah, I mean, you're never going to. How can you believe? There's how can you believe that she's anybody else other than the person we we know so well? Um, and as I understand it, with Netflix, you know, they still have a a, a deal there. Who are going to want their pound of flesh? Obviously, I think. Harry still has a book deal as well, although he said he's not going to talk about the past anymore. Well, let's see how that goes, because mm -hmm. they're going to want their pound of flesh as, as well in terms of, you know, uh, the stuff that he says he's he's held back. Um, yeah, I mean, Megan, with Megan, she's obviously a, a mum of, of two young kids. Uh, that clearly is is the priority. But once they're at school and, and, and off doing more stuff uh, and, and need less, you know, uh, constant care, then I'm sure the media career will, will grow then. I, it's hard to see it in fiction, though, um, in being an actress. I can see it more in um, factual. I don't, um, I don't know if we can answer, I don't know if we can get to the bottom of this, but I was just wondering, why do you think so many people are animated about Megan, why are we so interested in the fact that she's brought out jam? Because well, there's, there's lots of people, you know, <laughs> criticising her, uh, laughing at her, mocking, you know, this idea that, that she's selling jam. Why do we get so excited about everything that she does? It's become very divisive, hasn't it? And we know, indeed, in the comments below this below this uh, program, you'll you'll we'll see how divisive it is. Mm. It's horrible. It can be horrible on social media, um, and. I trace it back to the Oprah interview in, um, well, three years ago, isn't it? When Prince Philip was in hospital and that Oprah interview came out. And the clear implication of the box office moment of that Oprah interview was that somebody had been racist. Mm. And uh, Harry obviously, you know, they let, and that was the implication, and they let that run for a year and a half or whatever it was. And that until felt Harry almost said, scripted. You know, that, that, that was the bombshell that they were going to, 
that, that they wanted to deliver on Oprah. Yeah. It? It, was, it was like a scripted kind of bombshell that they wanted the world to know. Yeah. Um, and then Harry has rowed back. It doesn't, it's not mentioned in the book. And Harry rows back on it. And, um, and here we are talking about it again. But, you know, racism obviously is terrible. Um, I remember the coverage of Meghan. I was there in 2017, 2018, before the wedding. After the wedding, 90%, 95% of the coverage was incredibly positive and supportive. But that's not how they remember it. They're, they're remembering, you know, very specific examples where they feel they were being undermined, got at by the media, not helped by staff, royal staff. Um, and so it's gone downhill from there. Uh, and it, you know, as I say, great shame, completely avoidable, but it's happened now. Mm. And I don't see how you put it back together again. So, so tell us a little, little bit about that then. So you were on the scene, obviously, you, you're very experienced in, in what you do, but you were on the scene when Meghan arrived. Yeah. And it, it was kind of exciting, wasn't it, oh, that, yeah, that yeah, Harry yeah. had got himself a new... Um, it was great. A new, we wanted Harry to find a fine love and, and, and settle down. Absolutely, and yeah. But what was the, what was the feeling within the, within the media then, with the media pack around 2017? and? When you say it was avoidable as well, as well. Oh, I mean the, the the Mexit and oh, going right, to fine. going to California, yeah. um, and I mean I do believe, uh, as uh, Val Lowe has said, you know that you know people bent over back, people within the palaces, you know, were helping, mm. and really wanted wanted it to work. The idea that people never wanted it to work, I just it find completely bizarre. Um, the atmosphere was really happy and supportive and you know everybody likes harry yeah. and they want him to be happy he we knew he was seriously worried he would never find someone after you know previous relationships which had ended not because you know the the women didn't like the girlfriends didn't like harry but they didn't like everything that went with yeah. him he was seriously worried he would never find someone who would put up with all of that um so you know but i think people were delighted as I say, 95% of the coverage. I mean, there are a few, couple of weird headlines, uh, but not this sort of hatchet job that they, they, make, they sometimes make it out to be. And I, my memory of the media, up to including the wedding, after the wedding, was very positive, very supportive, covering events, you know, her first walkabouts in the, in the winter of 2018 before the wedding. You could see the demographic change in the people who turned out to see Harry and Meghan. There was a clear transformation there in the, in the people turning out to see them, which was great. Mm. It was reflecting, you know, modern modern Britain. And I mean, all of that's, you know, been squandered, which did is you, a great shame. Did you have much interaction with Harry over the years? You and um, before, well, no, the answer, the quick answer is no. We did get to meet him and it was great to meet him on certain occasions. I interviewed him th uh, three times, I think, yeah. on various issues. Um, Invictus is 10, I mean, I can't believe Invictus is 10 years ago, 2014, the first one in London. So I got to speak to him then. The more, and uh, with his charity in uh, Lesotho, Centre Bale, um, which is a great, and it's still going, great charity, that. Um, it was great to talk to Harry. Uh, we, a lot of the conversations were sadly off the record, but you know, you can I, tell I us them wished... now, Simon. You can tell us them now. No, you can't. <laughs> I wish, well, I mean, I, I wish that we could, uh, you know, record them because that's actually when you, with all of them, you get to have a proper chat. For example, after his first tour of duty to Afghanistan, um, and he was out there for several weeks, and it was actually a foreign website and a foreign newspaper that blew his cover. The British media had this quite controversial gentleman's agreement not to, mm -hmm. and, and the British media honoured that and um, I did say to him I hope I hope you understand it was the, the British media did not blow that for you and he did uh, he did get that and he you know it was it was unfortunate that once the foreign website had done that he had to come back so he was furious but he wasn't furious specifically with us but obviously the relationship is strained we all know the backstory we don't have to go through all of that mm. and uh, although in his book he does um, and uh, you know he clearly believes that the British media never gave never gave them a chance, which you know I don't understand. No. Should we talk about the royals that are working or not working um, in the UK, or the royals that we get to see, you know, quite regularly out on, out on jobs on, on fixed points and pools that me, me and you do quite regularly? Um, at the start of the year, 
I mean, we might have had a conversation. I had conversations with other people saying we need our passports this year. We're going to be travelling all around the world. Yeah. Um, you know, the coronation's over. We're going to have William and Catherine are out. And we had looking at all these exciting events, you know, everything from Trooping the Colour to Chelsea Flower Show to Royal Ascot. These are like garden parties, really exciting events coming up. But well, we had to rip up our diaries, didn't we, when uh, the King and sadly Princess of Wales fell ill and then we had cancer. We, at some stage, we're going to, the, the, the palace are going to have to kind of reintroduce them um, back into big public engagements. Yeah. I'm excited about that. I think the public are excited about that. How do you think the palace are going to achieve that? And what are their kind of challenges in, in getting Kate and the King back into public? Well, the most important thing is doctor's orders, isn't it? And I think the King um, was hoping he could do more during his during his cancer treatment and uh, was probably advised, you know, that you're going to have good weeks and you're going to have bad weeks and you're going to... So you, there will be cancellations if you do that. So as we've seen over the last few weeks, he's had small meetings, small engagements at Buckingham Palace usually, where there have been cameras. <clears throat> we saw the audience with the Prime Minister. And, uh, you know, hopefully the recovery uh, goes well. June, May and June are rush hour in the, in the, in the royal calendar. And trooping is, um, which is the official, is the closest thing we have to a national day, really. It's, it's the, the, the sovereign's birthday parade, known as Trooping the Colour. Uh, he was on horseback last year. Perhaps he can get, attend uh, by carriage this year. Go down to horse guards in a carriage. Um, and it, but if he does, if, if he doesn't manage to do that, that obviously will be major, major news. Uh, Commonwealth Conference in October in Samoa. Uh, he'll, he'll desperately want to be there. And if you're in that hemisphere, then mm. you've got to visit Australia and New Zealand um, as well. So I imagine they're targeting June for Catherine as well. Obviously, completely different. It could be a completely different time scale. Um, but I mean, the, the picture, if, they, if it's possible, of the king and Catherine in a carriage leaving the palace and going down the mall would, would, be, would say it all, wouldn't it? Um, you wouldn't need a, a press release after that. Um, so if it's possible, you know, actions speak louder than words. That I'm sure that's what they would hope for. But it will it will be on doctors' orders, mm. and we just nobody knows, do they? How people are going to respond to respond to treatment? Every family has been touched by cancer. We've all, you know, unfortunately, we've all seen it, and there are there are ups and downs. There are good days and bad days. We've got to be patient, I yeah. think, and I think people haven't been patient the last couple of months. No, I mean, the stuff with Catherine was just weird. And social media has... I think the last 10 years have rewired people's brains. It has been a tumultuous 10 years, and there's social media. And it's sort of rewired people that, you know, the idea that she's... Kate's gone missing, or Kate's disappeared. I mean, absolute nonsense. She was at home recovering. And then on the American talk shows, it got really frenzied. You know, we saw people saying stuff which they have apologised for now but they should never have said it in the first place. She's a, she's a, she's a young mum, three kids. She's been treated for cancer, which she only found out she had after going in for the surgery in January. You know, why should they have to... I, I genuinely don't understand why people have a right to know everything. No. You, you don't have a right to know everything. Well, they've dealt with it differently, haven't they? The Princess of Wales is um, that their office and, and, and her and William have have been very private, whereas the King's been a little bit more open. He's wanted to be seen. He's yeah. wanted people to know about his diagnosis. But I tell you, he's not been missing, and that's Prince William. He was back yep. out this week. Um, I was very fortunate enough to be there. He was, he looked on good form. He looked uh, he looked tanned actually. He looked like almost like he'd been away or he enjoyed some sunshine up in Norfolk. But he looked tanned and relaxed. It was very um, uh, engagement focused. You know, when you do these jobs yeah. and they're all the questions are specifically about this. It was, it was a food surplus place where they hand yeah. out food to, to local charities and stuff like that. But we were very lucky. There was one woman who um, gave William um, a couple of cards, uh, one for the King and one for, uh, one for the Princess of Wales. Did, have you seen the footage of that? Where yes, we ran it on Five yeah, News and yeah. it's, it's great. And, it was, it, you know, it's very... T you actually, you see how touched he is when those cards are 
handed over. And he was on good form, I agree. I mean, when he was in the kitchen chopping, I don't think he does a lot of cooking. I don't think he does a lot of chopping. But anyway, he was chopping celery, wasn't he? He was worried about his fingers. He was worried about yeah. distributing his fingers. But that charity is absolutely right up his street. You know, the wicked amount of food waste we have in this country. Perfectly good food going to landfill, but thankfully there are charities that step in and, and, and make, make meals out of it and then distribute that. And that was the charity he was at at uh, Sunbury. And Feltham, I think, was the, was the youth club he, he went to. Um, yeah, he looked on good form. Uh, he uh, got a trip in the van, didn't he? He mm. got, uh, so that makes a trip from, a, a change from Jaguars and uh, Range Rovers. He was up front in the, in the transit van. Um, and yeah, he'll be doing more of that. Well, as, I, read this as week, I read this week they were talking about that maybe he, he won't be coming back to full time no. while, while the Princess of Wales isn't, you know, is, is still recovering, that he may well do fewer, fewer jobs. He sometimes gets criticised for not doing many jobs, actually, yeah. William. But he, um, yeah, we're not sure how often we're going to see him now, but there was a really nice interaction there, I thought, with the women. Yeah, and they're always keen to stress, as you know, that he's doing a lot behind the scenes. So mm -hmm. Earthshot being quite a good example. Um, what his father's very good at and what William is trying to do with Earthshot is to bring people together. Um, I noticed actually on that visit yesterday, somebody said to him, his guide said to him how much waste, it wasn't just supermarket food, it was airport food. Mm. And how much waste there is at every airport. And I think William said, well, I know the boss of, I know the boss of yeah. the AA or whoever. Yeah. We, can, uh, we, can, we can have a word. And that, you know, they don't have formal power, but they do definitely have this convening power 100%. of bringing people together and sometimes gently knocking heads together and saying, mm. that food must not go to a tip. I know somewhere where it should go. I was on a job well, a couple of years ago and the King was with some local supermarket managers. They were talking about food waste there. And he, was, he, he literally just said, well, I know X, Y, and Z. I know this charity you will need to go and talk. And the charity was there and they put them together, you know, in, yeah. in front of the king. Yeah. And that led to, I think, some some, uh, some projects that he's been doing for his to, for his Commonwealth to, to hand out more food. It's really good. William understands that, you know, ribbon cutting and mm. plaque unveiling is important. He gets it. He fully understands why people want that. But he obviously wants to do more than that, mm. as Charles as Charles does. So, you know, he, he, um, he does do stuff behind the scenes, mm. which, you know, they don't send cameras to. Now that, as I say, that the, the the footage of um, uh, William with, with with the lovely lady that gave the cards is a really nice moment. Another bit of footage that I was watching this week was a bit more awkward. The Duchess of Sussex was at a polo event um, with Harry, and if you watch the footage, she kind of appears to ease uh, one of the other ladies out of uh, out of the way, so she doesn't get to stand next to okay. Prince Harry. Over the years, have you ever had or seen any awkward situations? You know, you've been on tours to like Australia and with, with, yeah. with the Sussexes, for instance. Uh, well, the funny ones are when people are trying to edge their way in, right. <laughs> and uh, they're determined to get into a, into the picture. And as you know, with royal engagements, there there comes a point where you've just got to go with the flow, and you you can't. You can't stage manage uh, everything. Um, so people being edged out, firmly edged out, or people trying to edge their way in, they're, they're, they're the funny ones. Um, uh, and there comes a point where it's obviously very public with lots of cameras and, and lots of people watching that you've sort of got to get, you've sort of got to go with the flow. But um, yeah, edging somebody out must be, uh, must be difficult. What happened in Fiji, Simon? I'd, Fiji with it, um, Megan. Well, that was really the only big tour uh, they. Well, it is the only big tour they did before Archie was uh, born. So this was a few months after their wedding in 2018. Australia, New Zealand, Fiji, Tonga. It was an epic trip, um, but uh, in hindsight, we, we now everything makes sense. The sort of hostility towards the British media and. Um, and how he was uh, how he was treating us. I don't expect anybody to feel sympathy, but it was a bit weird compared to the Harry that I knew from previous trips. It was it was it was quite hostile, um, and certainly no chats off mm. the record chats. Um, so there was one day in this epic tour that was specifically Meghan's day for women's education, um, empowerment entrepreneurs and I was at the um, 
uh, engagement in the in the market in Suva, which was hot, but it wasn't chaos, and there was a clear route uh, for for Megan to take there to meet all of these female uh, business uh, businesses that she wanted to meet. And it was supposed to last half an hour, 40 minutes, and it lasted about 15, if that, because at some point in, as she was meeting people, it, it, the whole atmosphere changed in the royal party. It came from Megan, I believe, mm. and everything went into warp drive. And my cameraman, Rui, was the official British TV cameraman, the pool cameraman for that event. And um, we got footage of the press officers sort of pushing him back. You've got to get back. You've got to get back. Everything went into fast forward. Um, Megan goes in, gets into a car. She, she walks past light, all these people who've lined up, all these women who've lined up for hours to tell her about their, their business. Don't get to meet her. The woman with the gift at the end, you know, just she, she zooms past. It was really weird. Mm. And afterwards... Uh, the press officers and the staff were spinning it as a security issue. Well, it wasn't. If, it had been, if there had been any sort of security issue, the Scotland Yard detectives mm. wouldn't have allowed it to, the, the event to start. Health issue, I'm not sure, you know, about that. Um, was it, you know, one of the stories is that uh, Megan was unhappy that uh, there, was, there was a charity there that she used to be involved with but wasn't involved with anymore, and that just um, uh, annoyed her. Um, it was it was a really weird engagement uh, that wasn't an engagement really, and the people who had been prepared for weeks to meet the newest member of the royal family just saw her zoom by. It, and, it's one of the most kind of more infamous kind of royal things that asking. Yeah. What did that mean for the tour though? Because these was, that was a big long grueling tour. You travel all around the, the world to see these superstars. What did that? What did, what did that mean for the tour? Well, I mean, it was, it was an incredible story, although we didn't know why. Mm. I mean, I think we know why now. I think it probably was to do with that with that charity. Um, I've really felt sorry for the the people who wanted to meet her, and well, you know, at that point, Meghan was the you know superstar, the new superstar of the British royal family, and all they saw was that, you know. <laughs> um, for us, it was a story. For the the palace staff, it was a nightmare. I mean, they were you know very upset. They didn't know what had just happened, mm. um, and we're trying to spin five different versions of, of what we had all just seen, and it sort of torpedoed her own day in the diary. You know, that had, was specifically the, the was the women's education empowerment day. So, with hindsight. Was that, you know, do, does everything now make sense? And, and was that, you know, Megan's, uh, you know, behaviour on that day, was that, you know, a, a true reflection? It didn't look good. Mm. It was, it was, uh, it was uh, not what a royal visit's uh, all about. And, you know, you don't see... I never saw the Queen do that. Mm. <laughs> uh, you couldn't. You couldn't. Imagine you must have that. had happier royal stories. Then there must be happier times or trips abroad oh, that uh, yeah. they've been with the royals that it, you've had better, better situations. Yeah, I mean, just to, to contrast it, you know, they the royals will know who they're going to meet, how long it's supposed to take, sort of, um, and which order it's going to happen in, and then it broadly happens. So with, that's what you saw with the late Queen and you see with uh, Char Charles will take longer. Um, but yeah, I mean, the, the royal trips that uh, with the Queen, which, which really stand out were um, actually two places she had wanted to go for years and years and years. She um, uh, went to uh, Bergen-Belsen, which was the camp that the British liberated in um, World War II. Uh, so covering that visit to Germany was very special. Um, and also in 2011, her trip to our nearest neighbour, uh, the Republic of Ireland, which she had longed to go to for many, many years, partly to visit the racehorses, but also because she wanted to go there. Um, and she'd never been allowed to go there because of um, security reasons, but finally in 2011 she did. And um, she began her speech in Dublin, Dublin Castle, which is full of... Very difficult history, but obviously between the UK and, and the Republic. Uh, but she began her, her speech in uh, Gaelic. And I mean, actually thinking of it now is giving me goosebumps because it was a very special moment for her. And I, I feel so privileged to have been on that trip. 
most people in the Republic, you know, 95%, 99% of people in the Republic really valued that visit. She went to Croke Park where the original Bloody Sunday happened, where troops for the Crown uh, opened mm -hmm. fire. And, um, you know, to, for her, to have her there uh, was incredible. An Irish historian told me on that trip that the curse of the Irish is that uh, we never forget. And the curse of the English is we never, they never remember. And um, I've always remembered that. But that, that trip, I think, was, you know, symbolically, which is what monarchy is all about, was very important. You're totally right. And nobody else could have done that. You couldn't have sent a politician in and, 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 and had the same success that the late no, Queen had. No way. Because I had family in Ireland at that time and they still talk about it. And they say, oh, well, the Queen apologised. She didn't apologise. No. But, but, the, but the Irish, they were so won over by, you know, how brave she was and, and how incredible she was. And as I say, speak, the, the speech that I'm yeah. very envious that you were there and you got to, got to actually yeah. witness it. But yeah, she said that we regret things that shouldn't have happened mm. or should have happened not happen at all, that, that sort of thing. Sinn Féin boycotted that meeting and I think they realised it was a mistake, uh, that, that, that visit. And I think they realised that was a mistake because a couple of years later, Martin McGuinness did shake mm. uh, her, her hand on a visit to Northern Ireland. Um, but actually that 2011 visit, uh, Sinn Féin officially weren't, weren't represented there. Is that your favourite visit, do you think? Your favourite tour? Um, yeah, I mean, uh, I've been very, I'm a very lucky Boy, I've been uh, I've been to some amazing exotic places like Solomon Islands with William and Kate, which was absolutely magical. Solomon Islands is one of the Commonwealth few Commonwealth realms where the king is king, still king, mm -hmm. um, and the queen then was uh, was queen of the Solomon Islands. So to have a visit from the newly married grandson of the queen, you could see men. I tell you what, the thing about that visit was it changed my perspective because I was quite cynical about it all until then, and cynical about certain things still. But what it means to different people, even on the other side of the world, in, in, in the South Pacific, you know, the Queen is, was their Queen. William was the grandson of their Queen. And to see these people who had walked, literally walked all day to go to this open air service, um, and William and Catherine turned up, I, I tell you what, my cynicism melted away that day because it meant so much. And who was I to say, you know, this is a, uh, it's weird that you have a queen on the other side of, on the other side of, of the earth. Um, that was special. Bhutan was special, uh, William and Kate. Um, but yeah, yeah, the Republic of Ireland one, I, I will always, always remember that. Well, listen, hopefully once uh, everyone's, you know, well and on doctor's orders, we might, you know, both join each other on the other side of the world in Australia or something like that, reporting on the royals, and we'll, we'll tell everyone all about it. Well, so I think Samoa in October, the yeah. king desperately wants to be at that Commonwealth conference, and uh, it would it'd be massive news if he's not. Excellent. Well, thanks very much. That's all we have time for today. I hope you enjoyed it. I thoroughly enjoyed the chat with Simon. And if you would like more royal news, then please click subscribe below. Thank you very much for watching. <laughs>